In this video, we're going to create this coffee mug using the Revolve tool and the Extrude tool with polygons. I'll first start by creating a free image plane in the perspective view, holding down my spacebar, going to Create, and clicking on Free Image Plane. And I'll go to the Attributes. And in the Attributes, I'm going to change the Alpha Gain to 0.5. And then I'm going to click on the image name folder and I'm going to import a JPEG for reference and I'll scale it down a bit. And I'm going to go to my front view and in my front view I'll just move it so the base of the mug is roughly on my x-axis. I'll go to my perspective view. In my perspective view I'm just going to pull it back a little bit and then I'm going to go to the channel box. And in the channel box I'm going to go down to the layers, click on the new layer icon that appears at the bottom right, little blue sphere with a white plane, and I'll name it. And then I'm going to lock it down. So down in the layer window in the blank blue box here I'll go ahead and click on that twice. And now when I deselect I won't be able to move this around. Returning to my front view now I'm ready to use my curve tool to create the revolve shape that will give us the basic beginning of the mug. Holding down my spacebar I'll go to create and I'll go to curve tools, CV curve tool, I'll check the attributes and I'm going to set it for 1. I'll start at the bottom because it's going to be left open at the top, so I'll click down at the base. I'll go kind of straight across because this is not a uh, orthographic view of the cup, but this gives us a good enough idea of what we need to draw here. So I'm dropping some points here to get a basic start on this. And maybe I'll come back down into the cup a bit so that I can put some fluid in there, but still leave a little room up here in the mug if we do a three-quarter shot of it afterwards. I'll hit return on the keyboard. Now you can see I've started my curve right against the y-axis so that when I revolve it I get something a little bit more accurate to begin with. I'm going to go to my perspective view. I'll hit F on the keyboard and now I'm going to revolve this. Now I'm going to turn off the template for a moment and I'll hold down my spacebar. I'll go to surfaces, revolve, and I'll go to the attributes. And I want a polygon for this so that I can put the texture on more accurately when I'm done. I'm going to revolve it on the y-axis and I'm going to slide down and choose polygons and then control points. Once I've selected control points I'm going to make the segments 21 and that will give me enough geometry to put the handle on. Next we're going to use our edge loop tool to introduce some edges so that we can kind of extrude the handle shape. So if we were to look at our geometry in our front view we have something like this. I can hit 4 on the keyboard. So I need another edge down here right across and then I'll need two in here so that I can join the extruded handle shape down at the bottom of the mug. The edge loop tool is under mesh tools, insert edge loop. I'm going to go to my attributes. I'm going to make sure that I've reset my tool to the defaults and now I'll click and add a new path right about here and then down here I'll add two of them. Hitting W on the keyboard to get out of my edge loop tool I'll go to my perspective view. So now we've got the geometry we need to add that handle next. Now I want to add it straight along this axis. The same axis that our template is on. So I'll go to my object mode and I'm going to rotate that just a little bit on the y-axis. And I'm doing that so I've got a flat plane here. Okay, you can see there goes the x-axis going straight through that set of polys right in there. So now I'm ready to use my extrude tool. I'll start by right-clicking and choosing face and I'm going to select the face here. And I'm going to go to my extrude tool. The extrude tool is under Edit Mesh and you'll see Extrude. If it's on your shelf, it's this little orange box on a white plane, and I'll click on that. Now I'm going to be using my front view to get this geometry in. So I'll go to the front view. I'm going to click on the little blue dial in the upper right hand corner so that it extrudes straight out. So I'll click and drag. 
and I'm starting to use the tools that are in the extrude function to add and manipulate the new faces. And I'm going to add very few of these to initiate this, and then I can always add more at the edge loop tool afterwards just to maintain a low poly count. So at this point, it's really kind of an intuitive thing. I'll click on the extrude tool again, or I can hit G on the keyboard, and it just repeats the previous function I might have been using. I'll click on the dial again, and I'll pull straight out. And I'll pull down. And at this point, maybe I'll start to rotate this a bit. I'll hit G again, clicking on the dial. Maybe I'll start to scale a bit. I always leave the geometry a little bit larger than the actual template because if we run the smooth or use the smooth proxy, the geometry shrinks. I'll hit G again. And I'll add one more. And I'm stopping short of where it would meet the other part of our geometry because we're going to be using a weld tool to do that. So if we were to go to a perspective view now, we have something like this. I'm going to go to my object mode for a moment. And I'll hit 3 on the keyboard. You can see kind of what we've got. That's with the smooth proxy. And that would be great just using the prox if we were rendering with Arnold, but if this was for a game environment, uh, it would have to be a poly, and we would just add more faces afterwards. I'll hit one on the keyboard. Now before we weld, we want to get rid of the little inside face that we see here, and we want to get rid of the one we're going to attach it to, which is right here. So I'm right-clicking and choosing face, and then I'm um, choosing the face I want to delete and hitting delete. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose vertex. And then in the upper right hand corner of the interface, you'll see a little Rubik's cube kind of an icon with a hammer in it. It's just to the left of the little man with the Da Vinci pose. And I'm going to click on that and it gives us a series of tools, one of which is the target weld. And what that means is now, if I select that in the toolbar, it turns blue, I can go over now and I can select this vertex, click on it and hold it with my left mouse and drag over to the one I want to weld it to and snap it to that point. I'm going to do that for each of these points to the opening we created. I'll hit W on the keyboard to get out of the tool. I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to preview it. Now we just need to add a couple more edges so that it holds together a little bit uh, more tubular here instead of this kind of anamorphic shape. So I'll hit 1 on the keyboard and I'll go back to my object mode. I'm going to get my edge loop tool and I'm going to put in a new edge in very close to where it joins the mug up here and I'll put one down here. And again, I'll hit 3 on the keyboard to see what kind of progress I have. I'm going to go to my perspective view, object mode. I'll go to my channel box now. And in my channel box, I'm going to turn the template off. So we should have something like this. Uh, next, we'll do the texture map.